Joe Biden making it official today, hoping his third run for the White House is the charm. It's the latest chapter in the 76-year-old Democrat's long political career. His life started in Scranton, Pennsylvania, where Biden traces back his blue-collar roots. Everything important in my life that I learned, I learned here in Scranton. His family later moved to Delaware, where Biden first took public office as a county councilor, then a long-shot bid for Delaware's Senate seat, winning at the age of 29. But shortly after that victory, tragedy struck. I got a phone call. You got to come home. Your wife and daughter just been killed. A tractor trailer broadsided them and killed them. Your sons may not make it. A grief-stricken Biden considered not joining the Senate, but was sworn in at his son's hospital bedside. The Delaware Democrat commuted to and from Washington each day, often by train. He later married a teacher, Jill Jacobs, and had another daughter. No man deserves one great love, let alone two. Biden went on to serve 36 years in the Senate. Ted Kaufman was Biden's chief of staff for nearly two decades, witnessing the highs and lows of his career up close. He's got character. A lot of character comes with age, but a lot of character comes from being through you know, incredibly difficult times. So he's, he's very comfortable in his skin. In 1987, Biden launched his first run for president. As today, I announce my candidacy for president of the United States of America. But his campaign tanked after charges of plagiarism. 20 years later, Biden made a second run for the White House, but after a poor showing in Iowa, dropped out again, later landing in a different spot on the 2008 Democratic ticket. The next vice president of the United States of America, Joe Biden. The oftentimes blunt Biden at President Obama's side as vice president for eight years. The two forged a close friendship, cemented even deeper when tragedy hit a second time. My father, my hero, the next vice president of the United States, Joe Biden. In 2015, Biden's eldest son, Bo, died after a battle with brain cancer. Bo is, was my soul. Bo is my conscience. The grief ultimately impacted his decision on the 2016 race. Unfortunately, I believe we're out of time, the time necessary to mount a winning campaign for the nomination. Now, after months of deliberations, Biden is giving a third run for the White House a go. His more than four decades long career is set to face a fresh look from legislative successes like the Violence Against Women Act. I wrote that act myself with my own hand to his experience on the foreign stage. But other areas of his career will undergo renewed scrutiny, like his role in crafting the 1994 crime bill and his handling of the 1991 testimony of Anita Hill. Professor, do you swear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you God? I do. As he prepares to take his frontrunner spot in the Democratic primary field, those closest to Biden say he's ready for the challenge ahead. When Joe Biden looks in that mirror, He's not going to stop not do this because it's going to be hard or he might lose or anything else. He does it because he won't feel right about himself. Now, Joe Biden has already earned some high profile endorsements. Uh, his home state Senator uh, Chris Coons from Delaware, he's endorsed him this morning, as well as Pennsylvania Senator Bob Casey. Just so a few of the high profile endorsements that they are going to be rolling out in these coming days as they're trying to show these signs of strength for Joe Biden as he's currently the front runner. One big question is, will he be able to maintain that front runner status through these primaries and get to that general election matchup against President Trump? John and Allison. All right, Arlette, signs for us in Wilmington, Delaware. Arlette, thanks very much. Joining us now to talk about this big moment in the race, David Gregory, CNN political analyst, Jeff Zeleny, CNN senior Washington correspondent, Nia Malika Henderson, CNN senior political reporter, and Jonathan Martin, national political correspondent for the New York Times, also a CNN political analyst. And David Gregory, the news this morning, not just that Joe Biden got into the race. We knew that was coming, but the way that he got in and the message with which he chose to enter the race. We will not forget Charlottesville. Yeah. He says the soul of the nation is at stake. 
Right, and I think that was using this iconic moment of Charlottesville as a cudgel against President Trump, saying to primary voters that this is who Trump is, that we have to take the fight to him, and that Trump is counter to what America is. So it wasn't about personal biography. People know uh, who Joe Biden is and what he's been in politics. And it was also a message designed to reach out to uh, the progressive wing of the party, to minority voters, uh, to young, socially conscious voters to say, this is what matters. Questions about race baiting, about immigration. That's where we have to define this race. And that even though he, Biden, doesn't represent the future, right? You always think about going forward in politics, not backward. He's essentially saying, I am uniquely qualified to get off the bench and stop the madness of Donald Trump as president. Uh, and it, as David Axelrod said in the last hour, if he, there's a stature gap here, he wants to exploit that, to immediately become the front runner, to suggest, look, I can do this, it's me, Joe Biden, and then there's everybody else in the Democratic field. Yeah, so Jonathan Martin, there was reporting that behind the scenes, his team yes. was trying to debate what their first video would right. look like, what the message would be, and it seems as though they decided to go for the jugular with going right to the Charlottesville images. Yeah, we had a, a story on Tuesday night reporting that um, one of his new ad people who's known for his creative spots, uh, for example, he did the, the MJ Hager spot, which you guys have uh, seen, of course, on the air, Mark Putnam, uh, created kind of a Scranton Joe video showing Biden at, at his old house in Scranton. And that was more biographical in nature. That didn't go over that well with the Biden team and Biden himself. They wanted something that was more in this moment. And Biden is passionate about the events in Charlottesville, and he's been consumed with this for the last couple of years, plugging John Meacham's book at every turn around the country the last year. And that's why they ran this spot that was created by Mike Donnell and his longtime advisor that gets at what Biden is really passionate about, but that also doubles as something else, guys, and that is going over the Democratic primary nitty gritty and focusing his party's voters on what they are most consumed with, which is Trump and beating Trump. And it also has the added effect of saying this is not a normal election. Because if it was a normal election, he wouldn't be an obvious candidate. His whole case is this is a national emergency campaign, and that's why you need me mm -hmm. in this moment. We need to win. I'm the right. guy who can win. It, yes. it's, it's a pretty simple message. Jeff Zelena, you've got some fresh reporting from an interesting aspect of this. Now, it was not in that video. Joe Biden didn't wrap himself in the Obama presidency, but it is an area where there are people think he can make inroads, saying it was the Obama-Biden administration. What is Team Obama saying this morning? Well, there's no question that, uh, that Joe Biden is in this moment because he was Barack Obama's running mate for eight years, his partner for eight years. And he was indeed a very active vice president in the room for every major decision, um, in charge of, of key pieces of the portfolio. One thing that we're not going to see today, of course, is an endorsement from the former president. Uh, for one, it probably wouldn't work anyway. We saw in 2016 Barack Obama barnstorm the country for Hillary Clinton. That didn't work. So endorsements have limited value, and in this case, perhaps even more so. Barack Obama, I'm told, has had several conversations with Joe Biden. They know that he has to win this. Joe Biden has to win this on his own. But he did um, sort of issue a statement through a spokesperson this morning uh, praising Joe Biden and saying it was the best decision he ever made as a running mate. Now, as we go forward here, there's no question. I was talking to an advisor to Joe Biden who said what he's trying to do, as Jonathan was saying, is shake the conscience here and refocus the debate that there is one thing that this 2020 election is about. It's not about Medicare for all, right. not about the Green New Deal, not about inmates voting. It is about defeating Donald J. Trump. So that is what Joe Biden is trying to do today. Of course, he can't hit the fast forward button through this primary, but he's trying to reframe and refocus Democratic voters on the big picture here. Yeah. And change comes in many ways. Change could be a younger candidate a female a president, or it could be change from what the current situation and station is. And that is what the Biden folks hope he can deliver for change. But for all the talk today about how he's going after Trump, he still has to go on the campaign trail. And Joe Biden's biggest challenge often has been Joe Biden. Mm, and yeah, it's such, 
It's such an interesting time, right? So if Joe Biden is going to be the change agent at, you know, he's 76 years old, people know, have known him for decades. And in this, the most diverse field we've ever seen. But, you know, who knows what voters want? I mean, because in the polls, they often say that their top thing is who can win. That's right. I think that is what they want. In the polls we've seen so far, and again, it's it's early, uh, Biden has had a pretty steady lead there, you know, in the upper uh, 20s, 28, 30 percent or so. And you've got uh, Bernie Sanders in there as well. And that, of course, comes from some name ID. But it also, again, I think comes from what a lot of people think, which is that Joe Biden has the stature. He has the record. He obviously has the Obama connection uh, as well to go toe to toe with Donald Trump. Trump. And you see in that video, that's essentially uh, what he's saying, that he has the character uh, to go and, and make the case against Donald Trump, who he's saying doesn't have the right character, doesn't embody the American uh, spirit in the way that Joe Biden is arguing uh, that he does.